Welcome back to the magical Mara and we haven't traveled far and we are again yet with more lions It looks like a mating pair of lions and uh, it's one of the four big boys that dominate this area below Angama So very very exciting that he's making more babies and they've just had three new cubs so hopefully in a couple of months we're going to be inundated with cubs that are going to be in and or in engorged on wildebeest so it's, it's a good time uh, at the moment to have cubs around because there is a massive food source on its way and uh, it is an it, I just these male lines here are absolutely gorgeous their manes are massive remember hashtag safari live if you've got any questions for us here in the marvelous Mara. And of course, as we know with mating lions, they tend to mate about once every 15 minutes. So a bit of patience is in order, and we might see the next generation in the making. Now I wonder where the rest of the coalition are. They, they're it's quite often not too far away uh, when a male is mating because the fascinating thing about male lion coalitions is that there's a constantly sort of a, a changing dynamic whoever's in charge so the biggest strongest male might be in charge at the moment and that's probably this guy because he's mating first and uh, but once he's hungry and he hasn't eaten for a few days and he's and one of his coalition members wanders around with a big fat belly well rested and ready to fight he'll fight him off and take over the mating rights now it is possible um, I've chatted some lion researchers and that that a litter of cubs can have multiple fathers so it is it is it is quite fascinating and that lions and penis is so specially designed and shaped uh, for one of those particular things so it's barbed and hooked to try and make sure that the male mating impregnates the female but then the next male that that barb or hook works to pull his semen out to try and make sure he can jump the gun and get his genetics well jump the gun literally well, if you were lying all of two seconds um, <laughs> they are quite good at jumping the gun Rakesh would like to know how many cubs does a lion give birth to at once? Now, Rakesh, in the wild, it, it, it depends. It also depends on areas. Uh, up to about four is considered normal, but it's normally normally two or one to three around there. But up to four is considered normal. But um, the largest ever litter recorded in the wild was recorded in Kenya, in Nairobi National Park, and there were eight cubs born to a single lioness. So, but that is very unusual. Up to four is normal. Any Anything over four is abnormal. And as you can see, I, I talked about the thunder and lightning just now. Um, it's, we, we spend a lot of our days here in the Mara dodging rain at this time of the year. So hopefully it stays away for the duration of uh, the sunset safari. But there is literally a wall of water on its way uh, with thunder and lightning and everything frightening. Fortunately for us, only Dave's scared of thunder and lightning. Shame, Davey. I'm not. I quite enjoy it. I love a good African thunderstorm. Hello, Carter, who's 12 years old. Welcome on the safari, Carter. Carter is wondering, are there tornadoes in the Mara? There, well, I suppose not really no not to the same degree as you get in the states we do get dust devils um, but towards October which is basically a baby tornado and it is not quite nearly as scary and it's not going to rip your roof off now very occasionally maybe once every 50 or 60 years in parts of Africa we do experience tornadoes there was one in South Africa not so long ago in the free state um, and uh, you generally need these big open grasslands to produce tornadoes so there is always a possibility a tornado could happen in the Mara but it's highly unlikely likely and also with the the weather cycles we have here and the fact that it is very 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 temperate and it stays pretty much the same for the whole year it's unlikely that we're going to have to experience a massive tornado um, then I would be quite frightened thunder and lightning not so much but tornadoes I have a definite healthy respect for uh, <laughs> and I've never even seen one come on lazy kitties Ooh, there's the thunder. <laughs> now, 
one of the one of the funniest and most wonderful things we we we, we do here is take of this of course <laughs> questions from all of you, and we get some incredibly interesting handles from time to time. So I, I like you, nobody likes me. I like you for asking a question. So nobody likes me would like to know where the lines stick together. Uh, generally they do. Now, it all depends again on prey availability as well, how much lines stick together. So in the Mara, it's not uncommon for a pride to split up and they can find enough food um, on their own. But uh, generally in a place like Kruger where where Taylor and, and Ali are driving around, the prides tend to stick together far more. And, and that's because they're often tackling bigger prey like buffalo. Uh, I've noticed here, the females rarely tackle a buffalo. Uh, uh, the males do, and the females will only sometimes do when uh, the, the, the males are around. And uh, we actually watched the Anga whole Angama pride get chased by one buffalo uh, by himself, and they, they chased them through, through a lugger. So uh, it all depends, and one must remember that a lot of animal behavior behavior, it can be area specific rather than species specific. So a, a lion that, that lives in Kenya will have a different way of behaving to a lion that lives in South Africa, a lion that lives in Ethiopia, a lion that lives in the Congo. And that's one of the most fascinating things about what we do is that, and also all that behavior can change depending on weather and all those type of things. Okay, I think we might get some, some action, are we? Ladies? Ladies? He's, is he going to sleep again? Oh, no, there's a yawn. Let's just see what plays out here. Oh, there we go. A bit of flirting. Oh, yes, there's the flirting. There we go. See how she presents herself? Okay, I'm going to keep quiet now. Listen to those sounds. Wow, he's got staying power. No, he doesn't. And no, he's, what, what's going on here? I think he's confused. I think he might have missed. Now that does happen quite often, strangely enough, with lions. Um, well, just judging from that, that mating behavior, it's probably quite far into the mating. They've been mating for a few days already. Um, and uh, you can see she, she's not too impressed, he's not too impressed. And uh, they are looking a little bit peckish. So maybe they'll go on the hunt this evening. So they've probably been mating for three or four days already. And you can see what I th I'm talking about, these, these, these Masai Mara males. They are absolutely magnificent. And, oh, it's Halftail. I know who it is. It's Halftail. Hi, Halftail. You stud muffin, you. Um, so Halftail is part of the coalition. And uh, you can notice he's got that missing tip uh, to his tail. So that makes him one of the easier male lions to identify. And we're still figuring it out, um, what's going on. So there we go. That's that's nice to know, Mr. Halftail. Now he's one of the males we did see uh, on that buffalo carcass a few days ago. So we have seen him before. And as I say, he's a, he's part of a four-lion coalition uh, that dominate the the top end of the triangle here around the Smucky Swamp all the way through to the uh, the Mara River. Oh, beautiful boy. I'd love to know how he lost his tail. I think it was hyenas. Probably when he was a, a, a young nomad setting out in the world trying to find his way in lionedom. And uh, he probably had an altercation with hyenas who nipped off the end of his tail. Irishi Kesh is wondering how many months does it take for that lioness to, to give birth, so what her gestation period is. Um, it's between 90 and 110 days, so just just over three months uh, for, for her to give birth. But quite often a lot of the copulations are not successful, so they don't, they don't always always become pregnant when they're mates and sometimes it takes quite a few different mating or Easter cycles and ma males uh, to produce the cubs. Oh, 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 guys, there's a warthog coming up obliviously to the lions. The lions haven't seen it yet. I've just managed to spot it because I'm up high. You see it, Darby? Uh, not okay, so just there's a little green, green, okay, okay, I'll zoom in to the right. A little bit more to the right. Just stop there and just see if he is just behind the grass. Okay, a little bit to the left, center frame. Oh, zoom, zoom a little bit to the right. 
There we go. Now, it looked like that warthog might inadvertently walk right up to the lions. And the, uh, the Ngama lions in the, and in this area, the lions in, in the green season, in the wet season now, most of their diet is made up of warthog. Oh, don't walk that way. Walk this way. Come this way, water pig. Now, this warthog's making its way back towards its burrow at this time of the, the evening, I'm quite sure. So, it looks, you know, it doesn't look too perturbed, you know, just carrying on being a water pig, doing water pig things. No, he's come closer to us. There he is. He's moved a little bit closer to us. And you will see there are other game drive vehicles out and about enjoying the Mara today as well. Now, the lions haven't noticed it. But it looks like the warthog is quite well aware that something something fishing's about. The, the wind is blowing straight from the lions to the warthog, so maybe it's got a whiff of those lions. And I think the warthog will be okay. There's a better short grass in between. But you never know. That's the magical thing about being live in the middle of the African bush. We cannot predict what's going to happen next. Well, we can try. But generally when we do, nature likes to turn around and give us a good kick in the behind to teach us uh, to watch, listen, and learn. Now oh, it's still coming closer. See, the warthog's got onto a bit of a mound there. Oh no, he went down his hole. His hole was right there. He's gone down the hole. Our bed said it was a volunteering lion snack. Well, it volunteered itself safely into its home. Yeah, you know, he's, but he's, he's turned around. All oh, the lines up. Let me duck down into my torrent so Dave can swing over. Oh, she's laying down in the long grass. Oh dear. Oh, in the long grass. <laughs> Yes. Now it looks like they want some privacy, so we're going to give it to them. We're going to start slowly making our way back towards camp because we don't want to be caught in the rain. Uh, so while we do that, Ali has got one of the most adorable creatures in the African bush.